Cool. Right. Yeah. yeah, thanks, mate. So let's improve your achievements. I was list them, shall I? Yeah. Still, yeah. John Boxer of the Year 2006, English champion, British champion, Lonsdale Battle Right Keep, European champion, I boxed in Vegas a couple of times, WBC Youth World Champion, yeah, I boxed for the world title, Madison Square Garden, WBA World Title against Brandon Rios for the 22,000 people, top to build Vanty Crawler at the Amin Arena, with 36 professional fights, 33 wins, and 20 knockouts. Six months after retiring from boxing, uh, all the money that I'd made from boxing had gone. We moved quite a lot as a kid, so we lived all over, living in Wimmingshaw, Beswick, Hardwick, Longside, Levenshoom, back and forth. So we was always a new kids on the estate, and I was the eldest brother, which meant if there was any trouble, I used to have to fight quite a lot, which made me the fighter I was. And when I turned pro, I was hungry. I was a very young, hungry fighter. I had people in the street saying, what are you turning pro for? Do you think you're going to be the next Ricky Hatton? And stuff like that. I said, I'll fight until I get beat. And once I get beat, I'll go and get a job like everyone else. I had one of the longest undefeated runs in boxing at the time. I had 31 wins on the bounce. I noticed my eyes like getting worse and worse. A couple of times throughout my career, I had scratches across my eyeball. Let's say we're sparring, someone's got Velcro gloves on, and they might not have taped them down or whatever, and then sometimes they'll throw a punch on it, and the Velcro will scratch across your open eyeball. It sounds as painful as it is. It's horrifically painful. And uh, once it's happened, your eyes are just like streaming constantly. There's nothing you can do. So I had a couple of scars on both eyes, I think, through scratches caused with Velcro and gloves. So sometimes you get caught with shots, your eye don't blink in time. So you get caught with a shot, your eyeball's open, so the glove touches your open eyeball and it can rip them scars off your eyeball. I was getting closer and closer to a world title, big money fights. So it's like, I mean, you're nearly there now, John, you know what I mean? Just keep going. And I'm a young boy and I'm like, yeah, obviously let's keep going. It's part of being a boxer. This is what boxers have to go through to be a champion. And I think, fuck it, yeah, it's only, it's, only, it's only my eyes. It's only my eyes. They say it's only my eyes, so let's keep going. I've nearly got a world title fight. I'm gonna make a lot of people a load of money here. Can't let them down. God forbid we let them down. <laughs> I lost to Kevin Mitchell, it was the first loss of my career. I'd had so many British title fights, so many European title fights, I was getting to the point where I was getting sick of boxing. I was like, how many fights are I going to have to take before I get a world title? How many fights are I going to check to get that get to and fights? What's going to be life changing money? Every training camp takes something out of you. Every fight you leave something, a piece of yourself in that ring. It was getting to the point when I boxed Mitchell where I was like, I'm still driving a that nine year old feet punto, green feet punto, it's never going to change for me this. I thought boxing is a shit game. Unless your face fits, it's a shit game. But luckily enough, rather than dwelling on the loss, I got the opportunity to fight for the world title very, very shortly after. Here is gentleman John Murray. I felt strong as a bull, really, really fit. And we went over there, we put, put on a top performance against Rios. Uh, we lost in round 11, but it was a top, top fight. I've gone to the toilet to uh, piss into a pot for the drug test. Um, as I've pissed into the pot, it's come out thick, red, clumpy blood, like blub, blub, blub. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like coming out like blub, 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 thick clots of blood. I'm like, fucking hell, that's unbelievable. After a fight, you can feel your head, it's like <laughs> squishy. Squish it, horrible, horrible, swollen, like you feel the, the swelling in it. It makes a noise, <laughs> squilches as you touch it. And sure enough, you go to bed, you wake up in the morning, swelling dropped. Both eyes will be shut tight, little slits, looking through the little slits in your eyes. Horrible, horrible. Boxing is a brutal, brutal game. I'd lost to Mitchell, I'd lost to Rios. I'd lost two times on the trot. I couldn't afford to lose three times on the trot. Otherwise, for me, my career is over. in phenomenal shape. I trained the trainers, a new style, a new way of boxing, and uh, really, really felt good for it. I'm razor sharp here, I'm red, red hot. I've gone upstairs all happy, finished my last spa, having a shower. I got a phone call and I come down, Mike's 
on the phone. He's going, what do you mean? What do you mean? He went, John, you fights off. I went, why? What's up? He went, you speak to him. I speak to him on the phone. I go, hi, what's up? They go, hi, you failed the brain scan. You found something wrong on your brain. It looks like a tumour. So you need to go to hospital today. He said, don't wait till tomorrow. It's important you go today. I thought, fuck it, I'm going to die. I had to phone people on the way home to tell them the fight was off, but because I was in bits, I couldn't get any words. I was like, I found the fight's off. And they went, why, what's up? He went, it's not him, it's me, but I couldn't, I couldn't explain. I was, I was choked up and, and I couldn't get the words out. It was right before Christmas. I was expecting the money for Christmas to get by and that, and it fucked me, really. So uh, the money from all the previous fights had ran out. Then I got a taste of what life was like after boxing. Yeah, I understood then. Uh, yeah, it, it was tough. I had to start working on the roads and that with my mates, middle of winter. Freezing cold, I thought, this isn't, this isn't no life, man. This isn't what I'm meant to be doing. December 2011, I'm boxing uh, Brandon Rios for a world title, Madison's Great Garden. 22,000 people. A year later, I was 12 months later, I was on the roads working, getting up at six in the morning, freezing cold, pitch black, digging on the roads with me, mate. Horrible, freezing cold. And that's how fickle boxing is. In my 12 months, that's how different it can be. The money that I had from boxing had all been spent. I'd, I'd invested the money from the Mitchell fights when I was, which I'd lost to an ex-girlfriend, and it was a low point that for me. But once you're at the bottom, the only one way to go, and it's up. We started putting things into motion, started working. We started getting the medicals done, medical passed. Um, we managed to get the license back. It turns out in the end, after having three high definition scans of the brain, after that, they couldn't find anything wrong. And it turns out they reckon it was a smudged brain scan. A smudged brain scan kept me out of the ring for two years in a prime of my career. It cost me a lot, a lot of money. You think you're going to win this fight, and then you, you're planning on the next fight after that. Maybe two, three fights, and then you think, all right, I'll be on big money then. But age catches up with you, lifestyle catches up with you. You get beat sometimes. And when I had my last fight with Crawler, when I got beat, I got a detached retina. It was career ending for me. So um, I knew I could never fight again. I've had, since my last fight with Crawler, I've had six operations on my eye to try and save it. It's deteriorated, so now I can't see my hand in front of me. Not, I can't see how many fingers I've got up. I'm gonna guess five. <laughs> uh, um, it's a savage, savage game. When you're in the ring, top of the bill, you're made to feel like you're the star. The truth is, you're not the star. It's all about you're the commodity for the business. He's always the one next on the conveyor belt. Once you're done, you're done. There's nothing in place to help you find your way in life. They take school leavers, remember. 18 years old, I was I was practically a school leaver and I knew I was gonna be a professional boxer. I was I had these men, these grown men around me, these businessmen, thinking we can make money off this guy. We can use him to make our money. And their businesses using young fighters. Most of them people that make money out of boxers, uh, you'll find I've never been in the ring. So I find it interesting that everyone that's got a lifelong career in boxing are usually the people that haven't been in the ring themselves. You give everything to boxing, you, you're working on a dream, you think you can win a world title, you think you're going to be a millionaire. I thought if I won a British title, I'd be going to be a millionaire. 80% of your fighters will go through boxing, they'll make all right money, they'll spunk the money, they'll finish boxing and then they'll run their ass. The amount of fighters you see, top, top fighters, and I know this because I'm, I'm a former top fighter and I've seen some of these kids from time to time. And uh, I think, wow, fucking hell, man. How have you ended up like this? And why, why ain't fucking someone helped you? No one's helping him. And I think someone needs to fucking look after these, 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 these men, warriors. They give a lot to the sport and they get nothing back. They get nothing back. It's, it's fucking heartbreaking to see. And this is what's shit about boxing. They need to be some sort of fucking boxing union involved. Do you know what? I might fucking set it up myself, start looking after kids, because I've been there and done it, and now what it's like. Overnight, I went from being a championship challenger fighter to as if I'd never boxed. And, uh, and then I had to start, I had to start my life uh, at 30, 
31 years old from scratch. Or well, I was one of retired. I started from scratch. Being used to that buzz of being a champion, having a crowd scream the name, blah, blah, blah. Once that's, once that's been taken away, there's a void missing in the life. So I mean, that's why they turn to booze, maybe they turn to drugs, maybe they turn to women, gambling. They're looking to fill that void. And um, life is tough for a boxer after they finish boxing. Or life is tough for any sportsman. It's not just boxers that struggle. Other sportsmen struggle after they finish their careers. They look for the buzz. And you see it time and time again. The, um, turn to booze, they turn to drugs, they turn to women, they end up on their ass. And luckily enough, I had the brains about which to set up the business. Spots and payday, I managed to set up my gym, set up my business, train amateurs and professionals, keep fitters. Um, keeps me busy from day to day, I enjoy it, um, and I'm very good at it. It's just, just what I've done my whole life, and I'm pleased to say I found a bit of focus in my life, and it, it's kept me on track. You, you never know it's going to be your last fight because you always expect to win your fights and you can't go in there with a mindset thinking you're going to get beat. So most fighters will come to the end of their career not knowing it's the end of their career and then never fight again. And then they'll do what they do, do, usually do, the wages six months after they've had the last fight, the wages will be gone. All worked out well in the end for me. But it's a rare story that it happens for fighters like that. And unless you've got major money behind you, it, it don't happen. Um, and sometimes even if you have got major money behind you, look at Ricky Hatton, Ricky Hatton's got a load of dough, but he, he struggled after boxing, he struggled with life after boxing, it's tough when you're focused on being a professional fighter for so long. Once you've finished boxing, you've got to start finding um, a new focus, a new goal in life. And it, it took me a few years really to settle into this new life. Now I train fighters and now I look after fighters. Every mistake I made in boxing has been a lesson learned for me. And I intend to pass that lesson on to the kids that I now train and look after. They're professionals, I'm, I'm an amateur. I have no regrets of the bad times and the good times. They've all put where I'm up to in life now. And where I'm up to in life is a good place. I'm happy where I'm up to. I've got a business, beautiful wife, kids, kid on the way, so. Uh, yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy where I want to in life. I've uh, done a good job. You know, I've made plenty of mistakes in life, and they're all lessons learned. So it's time to move forward and crack on doing what I'm doing. I'm enjoying. I'm in a good place, and I'm happy where I want to in life. Yeah.